This video is dedicated to a couple of people. The weirdos who still support BLM, whether if it's the organization or just the words. The people who get mad at me when I call out BLM for all the weird antics that go on and how they do things that don't benefit the black community. The weirdos that like to pick and choose which black lives matter and which ones don't. And the weirdos who get on TV and say black lives matter is only about police brutality. Whether if you're a white activist, liberal, right, left, any of that don't matter. If you are one of those types of people, this shit is for you. Remember Sasha Johnson, the woman I brought up a year ago and a couple of months ago as one of the reasons a lot of y'all play that game with a narrative and you don't actually hold that standard of black lives mattering to actual tasks. I say that and I bring her name up specifically, not just because she's black, not just because she's a black woman, but because she's a black woman who's also a prime prominent BLM activist. And for those of you who don't know who Sasha Johnson is and you don't know what happened, she got shot at some gathering or a party and nobody said a word. There was no worldwide news outlets talking about it. There was no call to action. There was no hashtag. There was none of it. And you know what's funny? After months of nobody saying a word, somebody posted an article asking, what's up? Where everybody at? And I think this same person or the same website has come back again and made a whole new article about it. Sasha Johnson and the black lives that don't matter. A year ago, she was shot in the head. The silence from BLM has been deafening. There has been a wall of silence, said one local campaigner I spoke to at a vigil dedicated to 28-year-old anti-racism campaigner Sasha Johnson. A year ago, on the 23rd of May of 2021, Johnson was brutally shot in the head. The vigil was held earlier this week in London's Denmark Hill, a short walk from the hospital where Johnson continues to lie in critical condition with what have been described as catastrophic and permanent injuries to the head. She has two children under the age of 13. The vigil was small, attended by about 30 people, mainly old school black power and black nationalist groups such as the Nation of Islam. One group was notably absent. Black Lives Matter. Sasha Johnson is a black rights campaigner who rose to prominence in 2020 amid the eruption of the Black Lives Matter movement following the murder of George Floyd in the U.S. by a police officer. Johnson drew a great deal of attention for her Black Panther Party inspired outfits, her passionately black centric rhetoric, and sometimes strange political bedfellows, and her willingness to debate her adversaries, including former English Defense League leader Tommy Robertson. Johnson spoke out against what she regarded as an unequal treatment and representation of black people in Britain, she joined and organized with a range of groups including Black Lives Matter, Kill the Bill and Roads Must Fall. Just before the tragic incident, Johnson was actively involved in the Taking the Initiative Party, which notably gained more than 4,000 votes in the recent local elections in Crawdon, South London. Despite her alignment with Black Lives Matter, with its identitarian demands for recognition and insistence on black racial victimhood, Johnson added advocated for more traditional notions of black self-reliance and black power. On the 23rd of May, Johnson was shot in the head at a party in Peckham in the early hours of the morning. Days after the shooting, five men under 30 were arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. They were due to stand trial in March this year, but the case collapsed in February as the prosecutor said it could only offer circumstantial evidence to the court. Following the collapse of the trial, both the police and Johnson's family noted the unwillingness of witnesses to cooperate with the police. Deputy Chief Inspector Nigel Penny, who is leading the ongoing investigation into the shooting, has said that there were plenty of people there, yet many have not been willing to speak to us. There's a grim and tragic irony to what transpired after Johnson's shooting. Immediately after the attack, there was a great deal of speculation about the motivation, and many were quick to assume that it was racially or politically motivated. And if it wasn't, white supremacy is still to blame somehow. White people were forever have deep-rooted hatred towards black women. We are the devil in their eyes, praying for Sasha Johnson. Hope she pulls through. Sasha Johnson is still in critical condition. The white attacks on her character, while immediately denying her shooter was racially motivated, are almost verbatim how the murders of Fred Hampton 
and Mark Clark were reported in 1969. I'm praying that Sasha Johnson receives full healing. I'm also praying that whoever shot her is found out. Also, to those saying that BLM is a terrorist organization are just threatened and they feel that they would no longer be in control. BLM threatens white supremacy. Laborer MP Diane Abbott went as far to say nobody should have to potentially pay with their life because they stood up for racial justice. The day after the shooting, while much still remain unknown, Black Lives Matter UK organized the vigil. However, as more information came out about the circumstances of the shooting, as we learned that the suspects were not white and that it was unlikely to have been a white supremacist attack, the commentary started to dissipate. Even after Johnson's family shared gruesome images of Johnson in hospital early Earlier this year showing parts of her head missing, many of those who initially spoke out against the shooting had nothing more to say. There have been no black squares, no hashtags, no mass demonstrations of civil disobedience. Even the crowd funder that was set up to support Johnson and her family after the shooting has only just surpassed half of its modest fundraising goal of 20,000 euros. And I would just like to add a little snippet in. Isn't it funny that they had this ready to give to somebody? All they had to do was tell us anonymously anything about this why it happened why were they there and nobody had the balls to stand up and say even anonymously this is what happened these are the people this is what they were planning to do and this is how they wanted to do it nobody there seems to be a double standard in society's response to black victims of violence. Police killings and police brutality, while relatively rare in the UK, draw enormous attention, whereas there seems to be far less concern about the fact that black people are disproportionately impacted by violent crime. Young black men in Britain are 24 times more likely to die of a homicide than their white counterparts. In London, violent knife and gun attacks are only becoming more common. This, I would argue, is the most potent example of how black Black lives are disregarded. This indifference towards the nihilistic violence that plagues significant sections of Britain's ethnic minority communities is poisonous. It is devastating. The indictment of our society, whether we condemn or take action against such grotesque violence, should not be contingent on whether it suits a particular political agenda. We must not let the shooting of Sasha Johnson fade from the public memory. We cannot let it become just another story of violent crime in the inner city of London. If lives matter, black or otherwise, her shooting should implore us to grapple with the scrooge of violence in our society. And I know there's probably some weirdo out there who thinks, oh, this was some white nationalist who just wants to stick it to all the people who care about Black Lives Matter. Nope, it was a black woman. A black woman who's noticed for maybe two years, maybe even longer, that there's specific people who only jump for a narrative. I've been saying it for months and somehow I'm a coon for pointing that out. But no, I have an honest question. Question. When you see or hear about a story that's a police officer or even a regular white male or woman shooting a black person, you stand proud, you put the hashtag out, you want people to see it, you want people to know about it, you want justice for them, right? As you should. Why don't we get that same courtesy for when it's a black person harming a black person? Are you people that don't want to admit that black on black crime is a thing, but you want to bloviate white on black because you got to throw some racial incentive in there? You're a fool. No matter how much you want to spin it, it's a thing. You can choose to ignore it. You can choose to prioritize this thing and then pretend to care once you finally reach that nice golden ticket that you're never going to get. But guess what? It's been a thing. It's going to remain a thing. And as long as it remains a thing, there are going to be people that point it out because there are individuals who like to play the race game. As I've said it, whether if you support that organization that scammed you out of those millions of dollars and admitted from the leader's own mouth that they were too incompetent to have somebody in the system that's going to actually have control over all those finances. Y'all let them buy these mansions. Y'all let them buy content creator houses. You let them pay more to a baby daddy instead of the foundation who has the name of the young man who, in my opinion, if you actually remember how Black Lives Matter started, is the reason Black Lives Matter a thing. You have to admit you are incompetent as all fuck if you're not gonna stand for every black life that is harmed armed unjustly. And side note, for all the people who have celebrated Sasha Johnson getting shot because she tweeted some dumbass shit or she got some opinions that you don't like, I understand that your feelings were hurt because of that. But under no circumstances are you supposed to be cheering somebody getting shot because they have a different opinion from you. Yes, I've seen the tweets. They're 
fucking dumb. But under no reason or circumstance am I supposed to be laughing about that. Nothing about this situation makes me happy. I don't get cheery-eyed and say, oh yes, another Black Lives Matter activist has been done in by her own narratives. No. That's dumb. And if you are somebody like that, guess what? You sound like those weird leftists you bitch about on Odyssey. You're weird. You're dumb. And if you're going to sit here and call me a coon and you say I'm a bigot, you say I got all this anti-black hate going on in me, I just want you to admit something. Concede this to me. Admit that you don't care about every black life. You care about the black lives that are convenient. You care about the ones you see 15 second clips of and you post your hot take and you're ultimately wrong about that. And then you sit there and say, Oh, where everything's still racist. You don't care. You never did care. I don't care how many of you white activists try to bloviate your black squares because you got convinced that if you don't do that, you're a racist. None of that matters. None of that sticks. We should have some form of evidence to prove somebody went and targeted Sasha Johnson. We should have some answers about why somebody would shoot in that area to begin with. It is embarrassing that 20,000 euros wasn't enough to get somebody to actually speak up. It's embarrassing embarrassing it got to that point to begin with but guess what snitches get stitches everybody don't want to speak up we only care when it involves a white person yada 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 it's embarrassing and it continues to prove my point black lives don't matter they only matter when it's convenient and fits a narrative subscribe to the channel be gone oh and by the way fuck black lives matter